Hey guys and gals, it's Jim back here, and I thought I'd do another uh, video as long as I got uh, been moving on pretty good with these uh, models. Uh, I, uh, as you can see, uh, the submarines, I uh, removed the masking tape from everything that was already painted black and all that. Um, got a couple little spots I got to touch up, but that's not a big deal. I got plenty of the red mixed up already for uh, another model that's uh, going to be needing the hull painted. Um, but anyway, um, I gave them all a couple coats of, uh, my tester's, uh, flat doll coat and, um, all that. I, um, two real light, uh, first, first coat was just a light mist. I wasn't sure how this would re react with the, um, um, apple barrel, uh, paint, the acrylic. Um, it didn't, uh, didn't do anything. Um, I've seen some where, um, the paint actually kind of like, it didn't crack, um, crack or crystallize. It almost kind of softened the acrylic paint up and made it like wrinkle where it had like ridges in it and stuff. But, um, I gave it one real light mist coat just to cover everything very lightly. Let it dry for about 20 minutes. And I came back and gave it a second coat, you know, um, to make sure everything was covered and everything. It came out real nice, nice and smooth. No, uh, no, you know, uh, flaws or, or uh, cracks or nothing or, you know, bubbles in it and stuff. So, yeah, I'm happy with the way this craft acrylic uh, apple barrel stuff turned out and everything. And for 50 cents a bottle, and should, I'd probably use about maybe an eighth of the bottle mixed with uh, my uh, alcohol. So you're talking about maybe about uh, 15 cents worth of paint. So, um, and that, that did all three of these, plus I got enough to do another couple models uh, that I already thinned out and stuff, and in, uh, in my uh, my jar sealed up real nice. But, um, yeah, it came out real nice, nice and smooth. You know, can't see the, uh, can't see the uh, mold line in the hull or anything like that. I did put it in as best as I could that, uh, that, that um, sonar bubble, whatever you want to call it, on the hull and stuff. I used... Um, plastic uh perfect plastic putty on that and all that so that came out pretty decent i'm happy with that and all submarines there you can see the difference in the two the uh different paint schemes and also the uh front stabilizers on this one this is the um uh this is the los angeles class they're both los angeles class but this one's uh Oh, I forgot the name. I got the uh, nameplate. I'll have to. I'll do that when I do the finished up video. But you can see the stabilizers on this one are down here, and on the uh, older style Los Angeles class, they're both basically the same, other than the uh, the rear fins and everything. There's different fins on them and stuff. Still got to paint the props back there. Uh, these came with photo etch props. I use the plastic ones. Uh, they're a little bit stronger. I figured the brass ones, if you catch them on something, they'll just bend them. So I did use the plastic ones. I still got to paint those gold and everything. But uh, my paint paint lines, my masking lines came out real nice and crisp and everything. Um, and then the older Los Angeles class, the stabilizers, the diving planes, or whatever you want to call them, are up on the, uh, the tower. Um, the reason they moved them from the tower down to the front of the hall eventually is um these these can break through the ice very thick ice and um when they had them mounted up there on the conning tower they could uh they could break off and uh you know get damaged that way so that's why they ended up moving them down a little bit but other than that they're uh, pretty much identical this one does have a little mini unmanned sub that mounts on there that they use for different purposes and stuff like that. I still got to attach that once I get the decals. Because there's a decal that goes right underneath it and stuff. But uh, yeah, I'm real happy the way the paint turned out. You know, like I said, it's a darker red in person than it is in the video and everything. But um, it's uh, it's almost an exact match for the color that I mixed up for the um, uh, Missouri and the Enterprise uh, Academy kits that I built um and all that and i don't i forgot if i mention it i'll mention it again it's called flamenco red and everything and um they do have another one that's uh i think it's called uh real maroon or something i got that i did two paint swatches, swatches just sort of toothpick uh the flamenco red is there on the left 
The other one is uh, is a, is a little too dark, you know. This is almost like the um, um, Tamiya Hall of Red. It's more like a, a brownish maroon, maroon, you know, real deep maroon color and stuff like that. So that's a little too dark for the halls. So anyway, um, that's that. Now, uh, as far as my when I do paint, uh, do a model ship, I'm not a professional model ship builder. I try to do... Uh, the best I can, as neat a job as possible. Um, I do have a lot of experience. Uh, years ago, um, back in the 70s, 80s, I used to uh, pinstripe a lot of cars for people, not paint-wise, but uh, they just wanted them done with pinstriping tape. So I can follow a straight line pretty good, but basically when I paint my boot line, that's usually the first thing I paint on my haul. I use automotive pinstriping tape. This is 16th inch, which I use down here. And I also use 1 8th inch. I use that on the Missouri and the Enterprise because they were wider, wider um, stripes. But I use this um, uh, automotive uh, pinstriping tape. It's 16th inch. I get it at the automotive store. I think it's O'Reilly's up in the next town over where I live. And um, I lay that down. They do have little faint markings that you can lay this down pretty straight and everything. But I do that first. I first I, I, I tape off where my stripe's going to go. Then what I do is I bring my masking tape up along the bottom edge and along the top edge. I peel that off and I paint my boot line. Once that's painted, then I just mask over it to paint the hull red. And I mask over from the other side to paint my um, my hull gray color and stuff like that. So then I get, that way I get a real nice crisp line. I've seen guys where they take little pieces of tape and they put like little markings, almost like little tack welds would be. And then they run their, their tape for their, for their stripe. And then they, uh, tr you know, get it straight that way. Um, I pretty much, you know, I can, I can follow along under the right lighting. You can make out the little, little mold lines in the, uh, in the injection and, um, get your boot line laid out real nice and straight and everything. It comes out nice and crisp that way and, um, all that. So, um, that's basically how I do my, my hall painting. Like I says, uh, automotive, uh, pinstriping tape, 16th inch, 1 8th inch. Um, it doesn't matter what color you use. I know some guys, they use this tape for permanently for they get black tape and just lay it down for the stripe and that's it. They leave it and then they paint everything else around it. Um, uh, I prefer to have everything painted with no kind of tape at all because eventually this could, uh, you know, start, uh, getting old and losing its, uh, stickiness and coming off and stuff. So, um, this does stick real, real well to the plastic just as well as masking tape. The only thing you got to be careful since this is vinyl you, when you're laying it down, you don't want to pull it and stretch it because then you will run into problems where you're going to get uh, paint bleed underneath in different areas and stuff. You just want to lay it down, you know, gently. You don't, don't pull on it, tug on it or nothing. Just follow along, press it down, and you're good to go. And it's got a paper backing so you, you don't have to have a big, long, sticky piece of tape getting all wrapped around everything. You just work a couple inches at a time and you're all set to go, but... That's how I do my hall painting, so um, it, that's, it works out the best for me. But anyway, I just thought I'd come back with this video, and after a few couple coats of clear coat, uh, flat clear coat, I wanted to show you that it didn't affect the paint none, came out real nice, it's nice and smooth. Uh, I did darken it up slightly, but not a whole lot and stuff. Um, so that's, uh, that's going to do it from there. Um, pretty much all I got left on these two subs is uh, a couple spots of uh, gloss clear so I can do the decals Then I'll give everything a flat coat um, Paint the propellers on there uh, That ship's gonna be a couple Couple weeks a month or so more work on there with all the photo etch. Uh, it came with its own photo etch railing and stuff like that. So um, That's gonna be that that was a nice addition and stuff like that. So um, don't know yet if I'm going to do any weathering. Some sometimes I just like to build the ships as they would look w would look when they're new, right out of the shipyards and stuff like that. So um, anyway, that's going to do it for now. So I uh, hope these videos been helpful uh, for anybody that's uh, been thinking about using a craft acrylics and not sure about it. Um, hopefully, I explain everything uh, thoroughly and stuff. And like I said, I just like I, I said. I use the uh, straight-up alcohol equate. I don't use any paint adhesion 
or anything like that. I, I guess you can up stay, say I'm still a little bit old school. Tell you guys the truth, I have never bought a model kit and washed it in soapy water. To, to remove any residue. I've never found a kit to have that much residue that's going to affect anything. Sometimes I might wipe, wipe them down with a, uh, with a soft cloth and stuff, get rid of, rid of any dirt that might be on and stuff, but I've never actually washed a model kit ever with soap and water like most people do and stuff. And I've never had any problem with my paint that he adhere to the models and stuff like that. So um, that's going to do it for now. Um, what works for me might, might not work for everybody and stuff like that. So, but anyway, um, like I said, hope these videos have been helpful a little bit for any of you guys that uh, might have been thinking about craft paints and been afraid to use them or use them and had issues. Um, I pretty much just use them right out of the bottle. Thin them out. Um, it's pretty much a 40% paint, 60% uh, alcohol mix. And... Um, you know, thin it to your liking. If you want to go a little bit thinner, just uh, do a little bit more alcohol. But uh, I found out the 4060, it comes out of the airbrush real nice. I don't get any splatters or nothing like that. I don't get any runs where it, when it, if it's too thin out. The only difference, like I said, is the 91% alcohol. The paint dries in a couple minutes time almost immediately. With the, uh, the only thing you do, you got a little bit more odor because it is a stronger alcohol, you know, more alcohol in the mix, um, less water. With the 70%, there's more water mixed with it. All that uh, isopropyl alcohol is, is alcohol and water. Uh, there's nothing else in it. So, um, being that there's more water in it, it takes uh, several minutes longer. Um, I think when I painted this one, I, it sat for about 15 minutes till everything was thoroughly dry. There was some spots that were dry, some spots that were still, you know, wet look to them and stuff like that. So it took about 15 minutes where with the 90%, I know when I did my big Katinga, it was almost dried immediately. And those were to me a paint, so there might have been a difference in the way those dry, dry compared to the craft acrylics, the apple barrel or, you know, folk art, whatever brand you prefer. Um... You know, the reason I used Apple Barrel because there was a color that was, you know, almost identical to what the Hall Red should be. Um, you know, down the line, I may try um, other brands for different models and stuff. Um, see how those work out and everything and all that. So we'll just go from there. It's just, uh, you know, it's it's trial and error. And if you're not sure how something's going to work, get yourself a piece of scrap sprue or a piece of sheet styrene and you practice on there. See how it's going to turn out for you. Um, you know, your paint, your primer, pr paint over the primer, uh, your, your clear coats, whatever, see how it's going to affect your paints and stuff like that. So, um, it's just a matter of experiment until you're happy with the thing, the way things work out. So anyway, that's going to do it for now. So till the next time, uh, thanks to all my subscribers. Thanks for everybody who's, uh, all the new subscribers. Thanks for hitting the like button. Thanks for all the great comments you guys been leaving me. And um, hopefully these uh, videos been uh, been a little help for uh, any of you guys out there, whether you're a seasoned modeler or a new modeler, and you want to try something different. Um, that's gonna do it. Oh, these are all 350th scale. The the um, guided missile destroyer. That's uh, 17 and a half inches. The submarines are about 11 and a half inches long. So, but they're all in the 350th scale. And the reason I wanted to do some ships and subs is to kind of kind of show a size difference of modern day naval vessels and stuff like that so anyway till the next time everybody take care have a great rest of the week and we'll talk to you soon with another video till the next time bye